Okay, so just a disclaimer at the start of this video, the player we're talking about is not going through the best scenario. That's the entire reason this video is even being made. But I will say, a part of me is kind of excited to talk about this player because we had already made two videos in the past, and by in the past, I mean like three years ago, talking about this guy and his overall profile ever since he was drafted in 2018. We're going over one of the most polarizing players from that season's draft, and how he's requested a trade out of his NHL team, the San Jose Sharks. Let's head over to 2018, as we said, and talk about first-round prospect defenseman Ryan Merkley, 21st overall pick by the San Jose Sharks, in a draft that a lot of people said he probably should have been a lot higher up of a pick, if you go based off of individual talent alone. Now, I say that, but if you look at the scouting reports, you can see that ISS had him at 47, Bob McKenzie had him at 32, McKean's at 31, NHL Central Scouting had him as their 45th ranked North American skater, even though this was a point per game player in his draft season. Long story short, with the Guelph Storm, Ryan Merkley was a dynamic offensive defenseman with skating ability, pivots, and offensive IQ that rivaled that of some of the top defensemen in the draft class. You had guys like Quinn Hughes and Adam Boquist, Evan Bouchard, all in that territory of being a potential top defenseman if they got drafted and developed properly, and Ryan Merkley was in that boat too from a purely offensive standpoint. The problem with Merkley can be explained by Bob McKenzie on one of his own Bobcast shows. Take a look at this article, Can Ryan Merkley Be Fixed? from the Hockey Writers back in 2019. What it does is it transcribes the TSN Bobcast quote, Ryan Merkley is an extremely immature hockey player with a massive amount of offensive ability. He's been described as petulant, and at times I think he's made his own life in hockey difficult. He's had poor self-awareness and a real lack of accountability. Furthermore, there was a Twitter thread that we talked about in the video a few years ago, The Problems and Drama with Ryan Merkley, talking about how he's got a reputation of being uncoachable, how he puts himself ahead of the team, how this user on Twitter, James, saw him play a lot once he was traded to Peterborough as they are an Oshawa season ticket holder, and he appeared to be a head case. Lots of yelling at his team, breaking sticks, giving up, etc. So he's still breaking sticks, say, the love of JoJo says from three years ago. He used to do that a lot as a member of the Storm and would get benched for it. He won't last five minutes as a pro if he doesn't fix his attitude fast. Being uncoachable trumps talent any day, in my opinion. Now, these were all conversations that we had had four years ago, three years ago. I gotta say that because I remembered now it's 2023, not 2022 anymore. But Ryan Merkley was an extraordinarily talented defender who, at times, would showcase the worst of his overall personality on the ice. While his offensive skill was tremendous, there were so many concerns about his defensive awareness, his defensive engagement, how he wouldn't really do all too much in his own zone, plus the yelling at teammates, breaking sticks, the temperament issues. Issues, you could say that, oh, it's clear to see that he's a very passionate guy who wants to go out there and win. And that's true, very much so. He is an active competitor, but if it gets to a point where you're uncoachable, you're getting benched, and you're being described by Bob McKenzie as petulant, which is a word that means childishly sulky or bad-tempered, then you can see why Ryan Merkley slipped to where he did in the draft despite being as talented as he was, as we said, over a point per game as a defenseman in his draft year. The next few seasons saw him produce an incredible amount of points as well. However, there was some drama with the Peterborough Peets as during one of their training camps, they just told him not to show up because they really didn't want him on their squad. There was drama going around saying that the Peets wanted to trade him away and they couldn't because no team in the OHL wanted this guy, not because he wasn't talented, but because his reputation amongst the league was really bad. That was documented in the problem and drama video that we talked about a few years ago. But ever since then, Ryan Merkley has made his debut with the San Jose Barracuda. He was pretty all right over there. He's played with the Sharks as well. He played 39 games last season, getting six points. And this year, he's got 14 points in 30 Barracuda games once again. He has not played with the regular San Jose Sharks. And Scoop on the Block comes out from Frank Saravelli saying that sources say the Sharks have made 2018 first-round pick Merkley available as he has requested a trade and the Sharks are trying to accommodate. He's played 39 games and still has waiver eligibility. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't watched all too many San Jose Barracuda games over the past few years, and so when it comes to what Merkley is, there really is a lot of catching up for me to do. 
What I did was went on to the San Jose Shark subreddit and took a look at what some of the folks over there had to say in regards to Markley and his development. The big comment here that I wanted to focus on comes from Lurking Est. I was at the Barracuda game last Tuesday versus the Bakersfield Condors, and that could have been the breaking point. Ryan Merkley coasted back into the zone and left his guy wide open. Then, the weakest back check I have ever witnessed, seriously, it looked like he thought his stick was made of porcelain, which led to the first goal. This was midway in the first or so, and he never saw the ice again. I can only imagine how often that must be happening to be put on the door for two periods of an AHL game. This trade demand might be the first thing Merkley has done with the Sharks that I agree with. Maybe he figures it out, but that is not happening in San Jose. This exact scenario is why he fell to us in the second to begin with. And no, it's not the second, it's the first, unfortunately. The reply here says, I've watched about five Barracuda games this year, and Merkley has either looked invisible or just flat out horrible. I'll be honest, he really lost his way when his partner Magna got the permanent column. Honestly, I think Magna made him look good. I am Tampa Dave says, sad way to go. The kid has potential, and I liked what I saw last year besides his rookie mistakes. Evil Con Evil 2.0 says he's been developing way under schedule. The next reply says he got to see Eric Carlson up close. That's what I saw from Ryan Merkley, a future D-man with killer offensive skills. He's getting better, just not anywhere the degree he should be. I've always liked him, and I hope he finds a good home. Astrovtop says, I've watched a bunch of Barracuda games this season, and he's still making a ton of the same mistakes down there. It's like he's trying to be Eric Carlson without having proved anything. And more of the replies in this thread go over how there are coachability issues, how he's not really learning from the mistakes that he has had, and the defensive responsibility, back-checking and all that. It's a pretty stagnant trend that has unfortunately settled in from the NHL to the AHL. And this is kind of why I wanted to make this video, because if you had told me three, four years ago, back when we made the first videos about Ryan Merkley, saying that he had these issues, even though he was talented, even though he could score points, he's still had uncoachable traits, etc., etc. And you told me that in 2022-2023, he'd be asking for a trade from his team because I'm going to assume he probably doesn't like getting benched in the AHL and probably feels that his development is stagnating, but the reasons behind him getting benched in the first place kind of fall under the same umbrella of things we had talked about in the past. While I wouldn't be necessarily too surprised in 2018 to hear that that was going to be the case, I would be disappointed. Because at the end of the day, this is a very talented player. That one comment talked about how he tries to be Eric Carlson just with not that much substance, and to me, that's the kind of offensive-minded mentality that makes good players good players. And for a guy like Merkley, he was drafted first overall in the OHL draft all those years ago. He was always a top touted guy. He was so used to being the top dog in terms of defenseman points on pretty much every team he played in up until the AHL San Jose Barracuda that that sort of mentality, it's almost like it's dooming him in a way because it kind of acts as sort of a safety blanket. Hey, like he's a good offensive defenseman who can produce points. Therefore, he doesn't need to back check. He doesn't need to do all these other things. And like, obviously there's a flaw in that type of thinking, but that's just kind of how it appears to me. I mean, the guy hasn't progressed too much ever since becoming a full-time pro out of the OHL, and now some of the temperament coaching issues are still there. Maybe he's not yelling at people and smashing his sticks anymore as often as he had been in the past, but the coachability, the defensive responsibility, the back-checking, the laziness, based off of what I've been seeing from Sharks fans who are talking about this guy, it appears that that's all still there. Now, benefit of the doubt, maybe I'm just picking out the worst comments to go out there and read. Maybe he's actually amazing, he should have been called up before, and the Sharks just have been treating him poorly, and they're the bad guys here. Maybe that's the case. But based off of almost everything I'm seeing on social media, the reaction to this announcement of him requesting a trade, it appears that it's kind of a similar pattern from before, and that's quite unfortunate. What Ryan Merkley needs, I think, is really just a system that holds him accountable and one that gets him to listen. We had said this in the video a few years ago, but heading over to a San Jose Sharks team that in that time frame had guys like Burns and Marlowe and Thornton and Pavelski and Couture, all leadership type guys that could go out there and talk to a younger kid and let him know what's up, what he needs to be capable of doing to succeed in the National Hockey League. It's just a lot of those guys are gone now, and it appears that the coaching hasn't really enforced that same sort of motivation towards Merkley, which is disappointing for sure. So talk to the comments on your thoughts about Ryan Merkley and the development he's exhibited so far in the National Hockey League. How do you feel about him requesting a trade, and what are your opinions on him 
today compared to 2018 if you had been following the draft prospects and everything in that timeline. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shrolls 99. And bye. <laughs>